I'm angry. Let's just get that out of the way right now. I've not had a lot of sleep this week or like for the past year. I thought this was going to be an easy review. I don't know why I was kidding myself, talked myself into the fact that this was going to be easy, but I've rewritten this review more than a few times for three reasons. Number one, the $100 price point in gaming headsets is a bloody battleground. Fierce competition. Number two, I don't like to be wrong. I don't like it. But part of being honest and opinionated is that you also have to be able to admit when you're wrong. We'll talk about it. Number three, there are some bold statements in today's video. When I find myself in a place where I have a lot of bold statements to make, I like to pull back and marinate on it, really dig into the comparison testing. But first, ground rules. We have to try to keep this video on topic today. It's bad enough we're reviewing two headsets in the same video. This isn't a discussion about whether or not you should use a gaming headset or headphones for gaming. You know who you are. This is a headset review for people that want to use a gaming headset for whatever their reasoning is. If you want to use headphones, get Ship 9500s and a V-Moto Boom Pro. It'll get you for about 115 bucks. Great cans, great mic, you're done. Bold comment number one. The headsets we're gonna look at today make all of Razer's previous wired headsets obsolete. Let's be real, Razer products have not traditionally enjoyed a good reputation in the audio segment in the court of public opinion. And the headsets we're gonna look at today are not perfect products, but they do represent a big leap forward for Razer in that audio segment. And it is going to put some real pressure on two different price points in that market. We're gonna talk about why, and we're gonna get into some very real comparison testing. You ready? Let's go. Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're checking out the Black Shark V2 gaming headsets from Razer. So the Black Shark V2 comes in two variants, the V2X entry level at $59.99 US and the V2 at $99.99. The most obvious differences between the two are that the higher end version comes with a USB dongle that supports THX and includes a removable mic. The X version terminates in a 3.5 millimeter jack with a splitter, so it's going to work on any system you can plug into and a download for Razer's add-on THX software that operates much like any other PC add-on spatial sound software. There's also subtle styling differences and some differences in the materials as well. The headband on the V2 has stitching on the edges and the inner material is like a breathable sport mesh versus being completely done out of faux leather like on the X. The outside of the ear cups have a bit of difference as well, mostly down to aesthetics. The ear cups on the X are memory foam hybrid with faux leather outer and a breathable fabric where they make contact with your face. The V2 has that ultra soft breathable fabric all over. This feels similar to what I've seen on the Arctic headsets in the past. Internal dimensions on the ear cups are around 65 by 45 millimeters. I personally prefer the stealthier logo and I would have liked to see that positioned on the higher end version but that's purely subjective. The drivers inside are both 50 millimeter what Razer calls their Triforce driver. On the X model they're membrane coated and the V2 has titanium coated drivers which in Razer's marketing words have enhanced high frequency response for better clarity. I actually do find this to be true. Tested head to head plugged right into the motherboard without the use of the USB dongle the difference is subtle, but it's there. The cable is also different with a green rubber cable on the X version and Razer Speedflex cable on the V2. Full disclosure, I've had an early version of this headset for a while and one of my few pieces of negative feedback was the importance of having a removable cable. Sadly, neither of these headsets feature a removable cable. In 2020, I feel like that's forgivable on the $60 price point, but for a $100 headset, that's a big misstep. I really like the slide adjustment system here. It looks like it would be really fragile, but the guide wires here are actually pretty stout. One thing people have a tendency to criticize in headsets and headphones are these exposed connecting wires here. In most of the reviews I've done with a traditional headset or headphone frame, I never see how somebody would damage these things. Ironically, with this design, particularly if it's worn at near full extension, I actually do feel like there's an opportunity to damage this because of how exposed it is. Oh, Ma, if you're watching this one, fast forward. Fellas, let's be real. Unless you hit the genetic jackpot, you don't get something like this without a little extra unwanted something elsewhere. And I don't know anyone who appreciates a south of the border beard. So when you're ready for your boys to be smooth operators, you need the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. With soft ceramic skin safe technology, a rechargeable battery, adjustable guard, a 7,000 RPM quiet stroke motor, and a surprisingly useful headlight, the Lawnmower 3.0 is the perfect tool for getting you that 
perfect tool. And it's completely waterproof and ergonomic, so take it in the shower with you instead of making yourself a new bathroom rug. If you go for the Perfect Package 3.0, you also get their Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Ball Refresher, disposable shaving mat, and for a limited time, you also get the Shed Travel Bag and a pair of these super comfy performance boxers to keep your boys close, safe, and chafe free. Take advantage of the Peak Hygiene subscription plan. You get a replacement blade once every 90 days for optimal hygiene and performance because the last thing you want to do is nick that dick. I know what you're thinking. Brian, you use and stand behind everything you speak on on your channel. Did you? Oh yeah, buddy. You bet I did. I got right up on there too. No guard. And yeah, they're smoother than 240 FPS. Right now, you can get 20% off free shipping and your two free gifts at manscaped.com with code BADCTECH. Manscaped, your nudes will thank you. Your boo will thank you. But most importantly, your balls will thank you. Click the link in the description. So the physical mic itself is identical between the two Black Sharks, with the only difference being that on the X version, you're going to be using your own onboard audio, which is Realtek in my case, on an Aorus Master motherboard. Now what I find with this motherboard input is that the vocal tone generally sounds pretty good for an onboard, actually, a lot better than you would expect. It does come off a little nasally, not sure that it captures all the bass in my voice, and you also can't use any kind of like onboard background noise cancellation because it just absolutely destroys the vocal. I'm using some gatherings on browns in the background here. The other trade-off is that it comes with a noisier input, meaning like a little system buzz or static at a low level all the time. So keep in mind when you're hearing this, we are completely bypassing anything Synapse related. And we're going to move to the Fanatic React. This headset also scored really high in the mic department when it was reviewed. This comes in at $69.99. doesn't use a dongle, so you're also hearing it going in over the Realtek on the onboard, like on that RS Master motherboard. I think the biggest thing here is that the Black Shark has better levels, like higher volume levels, probably a harsher tone. The React here has lower levels, but definitely what sounds like a cleaner, more natural tone to me overall. I'm actually still really impressed by this mic. Moving into the three that have dongles, we're going to start with the HyperX Cloud 2. Now, this is still arguably one of the worst mics in gaming, and this is going in over its own USB dongle, which is practically criminal versus the sound of the onboard. The actual audio sound of this headset is great, but the mic has never really been anything to write home about. And that still holds true today. Next is the Cooler Master MH752. Now, this is a mic that people have applauded before. It embarrassed even the Sennheiser GSP300, which was lauded for its mic. And it's one of the few I've tested that sounds as natural as going in over the Realtek, but with the benefit of going in over that USB, so you're getting a much cleaner input and potentially a little bit more background noise cancellation. There's always been a lot to like about this microphone, and that still holds true for me as well. All right, now we're going to the Black Shark V2, but this time it's the higher end, so we're going over the USB dongle and you know kind of surprisingly here I don't think this sounds as good as the same mic going into the onboard yes it's got better background noise cancellation embedded here because we're going through synapse but at what cost there's also a bevy of options here in synapse and we've seen this before and in the past on some of the older models I've generally had to work pretty hard to at least get a decent consistent signal out they have finally solved that inconsistent volume issue here that's plagued some of the Kraken and Nari models of the past. So you've got a voice gate here, which helps cancel out some of the background noise. Basically, when I'm quiet, it's really quiet too. So what it's going to be doing is monitoring there and helping to alleviate some of the background noise when you stop talking, which is always helpful. You've got normalization here. What this does is helps you prevent like from clipping the mic so you can get like really loud, like yo, like really loud on it. And ideally, you're not going to clip that signal. We also have vocal clarity mode. I guess the intention here is that it's supposed to alter the audio in such a way that it helps you to cut through the rest of the mix, but this sounds pretty rough for me, honestly. You've also got mic boost in two different places here. You have mic boost on the front side, so just on the microphone portion, and then you have mic boost on the EQ side as well. I, I don't understand this, but uh, I would pick one or the other or neither if you need it. Here we go back to default. And so we're just hearing this regular mic boost now in the microphone section. And then this right here is with no microphone boost at all. You also have ambient noise reduction. This helps to get rid of some of the background noise. These again are gap browns that you're either hearing or not hearing in the background. I'll be hearing it when you do. And uh, the EQ stuff, I mean, it's pretty much a miss for me, man. I actually leave it to default most of the time, but broadcast might actually be the best of the bunch. You can see this is going to give a pretty aggressive bump to your low end and a less aggressive, but I mean, also noticeable bump to your high end with that dip there in the mids. Now, you also have conference, which strips all the low end and the high end out and 
bumps the mids. This sounds really thin to me. I guess this is how you get that at home, like Zoom meeting experience during your gameplay sessions. And finally, we're going to go back to default so you can hear what this mic sounds like with everything deactivated. We're going to close these out by sticking with the higher end Razer V2 headset, which has the same mic as the V2X. We're going to bypass the Razer USB. We're not going to use Synapse at all. So what you're hearing is this headset actually plugged just directly into that same Realtek, same onboard input on that motherboard. So you can get a sense of how the hardware sounds versus when it's going over the USB and being processed by Synapse. One of the big undeniable wins here for the Black Shark design is the weight and comfort. It's featherweight with the base model weighing right around 240 grams and the higher version around 260, a weight that is just about five grams-ish more than the comfort kings of gaming headsets, the Cooler Master MH752. And it's not just the weight, the comfort here between the Razer and the Cooler Master is on par as well. Neither for me is more comfortable and that is very high praise. Glasses are also no issue. Heat buildup is only a minor concern. I've logged several six plus hour sessions in both of these, no issue whatsoever. They have nailed the weight and comfort with this headset. In terms of head size, they do a great job of accommodating all size heads, including those of you who look like your body is literally carrying the world on its shoulders. Gaming performance, ooh, the big one. Bold statement time again. This is the best sounding Razer headset to date. They nailed the tuning with this. I've never been one much for the EQ options and Synapse, that doesn't change for me here, but most of the older Razer headsets had this big boomy bass that you really couldn't get under control. It was almost like it was boosted in the software and the drivers were never really cut out for that. You don't have that here. These things are really balanced. Detailed solid imaging or direction, decent soundstage or distancing, and in some cases, even managed to pull off some verticality or knowing if someone is above or below you. You hear what you need to hear when you need to hear it without being distracted by overbaked explosions or gunfire in stereo mode. Now let's talk about where I was wrong. Just a couple weeks ago in the Logitech video, you heard me again down talking simulated surround sound. I've never felt like it really added anything to a competitive shooter before. I have been proven wrong. To dig deeper there, I wasn't really blown away by the downloadable software included with the X. I did, however, actually like the THX Spatial featured on the V2. Now, this may be the exact same algo behind the scenes, I don't know, but where I found the downloadable card version a little busy, distracting from my experience, gunshots that should have been front and center, like from my own weapon, sounded oddly far away. I actually found, and here comes another bold statement, the version in Synapse with the V2 to be very usable in competitive gaming. The only caveat being that I normally run Modern Warfare on high boost, so I punched up the EQ in Synapse and I set Modern Warfare to dynamic home theater. Without EQing Synapse up a little, I felt it lacked clarity. It sounded a little dark for me, but this is again, something I actually feel like adds to the game. What it didn't do is immediately make me a better overall player. It didn't skyrocket me to the top of every lobby, but it did make a difference in certain gunfights. I have to say it's nice to see THX Spatial finally delivering the goods in game. Even though it's not their intended purpose, I do wanna to touch on music listening here because I feel like some people pull double duty with their headsets. I will say this, traditionally I would have automatically picked the HyperX Cloud 2 as my favorite for music listening because it's got that real aggressive V-shape EQ, big treble, big bass. Traditionally, I would have gone that way, but as I've explored more audiophile options, I've trained my ear a little bit, I now prefer my music to be a little more balanced, a little more accurate. If you tested me completely blind, Here's how I would rank these. MH752 in first. Best overall clarity and balance, more intimate vocal, higher overall levels. Black Shark V2, strong clarity, but just short of the MH752. Vocals feel pushed out a little further, lower overall volume level than the 752. Leave all the EQ stuff alone in Synapse, None of it benefits music. HyperX Cloud 2 is next. Crazy, I know, but it just sounds very exaggerated to me now. However, if bass is fundamentally important to you, this is your pick right here. This is your number one. V2X, you're at the mercy of the membrane coated drivers here and the onboard audio, so your mileage may vary depending on your setup. Last place is the React. It just is what it is. It's not a bad headset. It just didn't beat the V2X. It had lower levels as well with my onboard audio. Very surprising results for me, and I graded these super hard because you guys know I take my audio really seriously. A couple side notes here, I did opt to go with the HyperX Cloud 2 over the Cloud Alpha because the longer I've listened to those two, the Cloud Alpha sounds really dark and a little muddier to me than the presentation on the Cloud 2. I think the Cloud 2 is the better 
all-rounder. Also an honorable mention for the Sennheiser GSP-300. I don't have it anymore. It probably would have stacked up pretty well in the rankings here, but I gifted that away to someone at some point in time if that tells you anything about how I felt about it. Nonetheless, I don't really feel like it's fair to include it based off my memory of how they performed. So let's close this out. For both, I like the design, the comfort, and the weight. The exposed wire makes me a little nervous, and the sound has come a long way for Razer. As far as quality control, longevity, durability, which has been a concern in the past for their headsets, that remains to be seen. I think the mic in both cases, which was personally a point of frustration for me on previous Kraken and Nari headsets, has come a long way, but I do still think they have a ways to go here. I would like to see more focus on the actual hardware capsule itself and less focus on some of the options in the Synapse software. At the budget level, the V2X, I think that's the new go-to for like the 70 and under crowd. The comfort, weight, the sound quality is really tough to beat in that segment. I've got to give it to them. For the V2, that $100 Bloodsport price point, even with the actually impressive implementation of THX Spatial, the overall design, the surprisingly impressive sound quality, it's a tough customer. It really is. But the lack of detachable cable and that iffy mic performance prevent me from putting it in the top spot. It's a surprisingly fine line between this headset and the MH752 for me. How important mic quality is for you or how curious you are about Razer's implementation of THX Spatial on this or how adverse you are to having Synapse installed in your system is up for you to decide. But in terms of comfort and sound quality, those are both so close I wouldn't let those be deciding factors. And that alone is saying a lot because the MH752 is a rebrand of a mid-tier audiophile headphone. Credit where credit is due, Razer really did something with these. As always, links down in the description for everything we talked about today. Any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up. <laughs>